Hello everyone, I just wanted to show you my progress on Operation Bloodshed. It's been a while since I made a video, so there are many new changes. The most obvious one is the uh, GUI system that I coded from scratch. And uh, I came into this uh, GUI project without uh, any idea of how a GUI is designed in terms of code and structure but uh, eventually by trial and error I managed to create a GUI that uh, has uh, nested widgets as you can see here a list inside a list check boxes text boxes and uh, all the common GUI things you can also collapse windows as you can see so the reason uh, I created a GUI was to uh, make the editor more user friendly and uh, eventually to expand it uh, for f future projects and games <coughs> sorry so let's uh, build a level so, so that I can show you the new uh, GUI features and also the new elements okay uh, the first element I will show you is the force field uh, which is a very powerful tool in the ends of our level creator this is the force field and uh, let's see it in game so the force field is this animated uh, set of arrows you cannot walk against the arrows but you can walk in the other direction and uh, across the arrows you can shoot across the force field but uh, the only thing that's limited is movement and uh, the same applies for enemies now there might be uh, some occasions where you need uh, enemies to pass through but uh, not the player so we can use the new parameters window by pressing shift and right click and we can change the parameters of a single tile in this case we can see that uh, this force field blocks enemies and friendlies but we only want it to block friendlies so we simply uh, trigger this off and uh, save and reload as you can see it's now yellow I cannot still walk through it from this direction but if I spawn some enemies you can see they can walk through it fine even if the arrows go in the other direction you can also now copy paste objects uh, with the parameters so if I press ctrl C and then ctrl V here you will see that every force field has been changed with uh, the parameters <coughs> sorry I have an horrible cold but I wanted to make the video anyway uh, then I have another element which is the bullet force field uh, which should be very straightforward it's uh, this glowing wall which you can pass through but uh, bullets cannot pass through from the most bright side while I can shoot from this side uh, fine the, the same restriction applies for enemies so if, if for example I spawn enemies with guns they will not shoot through this force field and they will uh, basically ignore it and uh, treat, is a, treat it as a collision for the right casting to the player I mean uh, they will try to walk towards it instead of uh, shooting at a wall you can also set parameters on the force field uh, you can block enemy bullets, friendly bullets and as uh, with the with the force field uh, for the for the entities you can also choose an ID, a rotation, uh, so that you can trigger it on and off with uh, uh, pressure plates. So we also have other interesting elements, and they are the bullet uh, modifiers, if uh, we can call it like that. So in game they look like this, they're just arrows that have no effects on the player or the enemies but uh, they change the bullet is direction as you can see you can specify an amount of force in the editor but obviously slower bullets will have their direction changed more than uh, faster bullets as you can see here
So they they are probably best used with uh, the instant bullet changers that uh, change the direction of a bullet. So the idea is that uh, that the uh, the bullet boosters will change the velocity and uh, make the bullets faster while the bullet uh, direction changers will instantly change the direction of a bullet as you can see in this example this is useful I mean very useful when trying to make turrets and uh, other traps that the player will have to avoid I'll try to make an example and as always you can trigger these items on and off with an ID As you can see, you can make a turret that uh, shoots faster and across corners, so you cannot shoot it from here, obviously, but uh, it can be very useful to create traps. Also, another idea is to use a pressure plate to change the ID of a bullet changer so that uh, the turrets can shoot in different directions. For, for example, set this ID to 1 and we add another bullet direction changer another booster and uh, some walls now we just need a pressure plate set it to 1 and that's it. So if the I trigger this off, the the turret will not show shoot up, down, and up. I've also added this uh, line that shows uh, uh, what uh, the pressure plate is uh, affecting at the moment. It's the bright yellow line that appears when I step on the pressure plate. Then I've also um tweaked the spawners so they are very easy to use now you can select the enemy type in this cool list box like here so I want to create a, a, a ball spawner I, I press on ball I set the delay to the number I desire and the amount of uh, spawn 8 for example then I save and uh, as you can see the spawner works as intended and it's very easy to use uh, in different occasions another minor change that uh, is not shown is that the player is now the now moves via acceleration and not uh, velocity so it can get pushed around by the enemies as you can see here it could be interesting to have an enemy w that deals no damage but uh, pushes the player around and uh, I do not remember if I showed you in a previous video but uh, I now have uh, enemies that uh, sorry that shoot grenades like the the charger here you can choose the weapon in the editor obviously or that shoot rockets like the juggernaut here so thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video I was, also, I was also thinking about creating videos on uh, game development with C++11 for beginners. So if there is any interested, interest sorry, in that, uh, let me know in the comments and I get started on it. Thank you for watching.